Okay, in the last video, we had just created a detail view for our gallery where when we click on an image in the index view of our gallery, we get taken to a detail view. So what I'd like to do now is to go ahead and create an upload form so that we can actually upload images and then store them remotely on Azure. So the first thing that we need to do is to just go ahead and, well, first of all, stop the server here if it's running. And we're going to create a new controller. Um, but first, I'm gonna go ahead and make a commit here. And normally I don't like to store images in source control, but just for the purposes of this video, I'll leave them here. So we added the gallery detail model and the detail view. And we also included tags in get by ID. And that's in our image service. Okay, so with that taken care of, we can just go ahead and head back into the code here. I'm just gonna close a bunch of these uh, open windows here. So I'm just gonna close all documents and minimize some of this as well. And in fact, if you just click this collapse all button, that makes it a lot easier. And now we'll head into our controllers. And what I'm gonna do is create a new image controller here. So we're gonna add a controller and we'll make it an empty MVC controller called image controller. So I'll control period to remove some of these usings. And then if you recall actually in our layout, so here in the shared directory in our views, I created a link to our upload view here. And I specified that it would be in the uh, image controller and then the upload action. So let's just go ahead and create an upload action here. And we'll create a new view model. And then we know we're going to return this model ultimately to the view. So let's go ahead and create our view model. And we'll add it to our models namespace. And we're just gonna call it, as we did here, upload image model. And it's gonna be a pretty small model. We'll have a string for the image's title. And just call it title. And then we'll have some tags, um, which we'll represent as a string here. And what we'll do is we'll have a user who'd like to upload an image, specify some tags like comma separated in a form text field. And then we'll have some logic in our controller or in a service layer somewhere where we'll actually parse out each of the tags that are separated by commas. And then we can apply those to the new image object that we create. And then the next thing that we'll have here is an iForm file, image upload. And this is gonna be a really useful type. It's going to come from Microsoft ASP NetCore HTTP. And so we can bring that in. And then back in our image controller, we don't actually need um, to set anything on this upload image model. So we're going to be presenting the user with an empty form, and then it will be actually up to the user to fill that form out and then actually post it back to another action result that we could, we could place in our controller here, which is going to handle all of the assigning of the properties that the user provides to the new object that will get created. And so for that, we'll need to create a post method, HTTP post, so we can use this attribute here. And we'll call this upload new image. And for now, we can just return OK. Um, we are going to actually put all the logic of handling what happens after the user posts an image here in this HTTP post method. But what I'd like to do very quickly is to now just go ahead and create the view that we can hit that will contain our form where we can upload an image. So here in views, I'm gonna create a new folder actually called image. And then inside image here, we'll go ahead and create our view. And this we'll call upload so that it matches our upload action result. Okay, so here, We'll specify the model. I 
Again, this will be our upload image model. And again, we'll keep it quite simple like our other views in this app. So we'll have a row and we'll call this an upload container. That'll be a custom CSS class we could use. And then we'll have a div of class form. Actually, I'm just going to call this upload form. And we'll apply our drop shadow. And now we'll actually place our form element here. So what we can do is we can actually specify tag helpers here as well. So we can have an ASP action is equal to upload new image. And then we need to specify uh, a method of post so that it can submit this form as a post request. And just to double check on the image controller, yeah, we called this action upload new image and we supplied the HTTP post attribute here. The next thing that I need to do is specify this encoding type here, or enc type. And here we need to declare it as multi-part slash form data. So the enc type attribute here just specifies the uh, content type that's used to submit the form. And um, so like the value of our method is post. And so now we can provide um, a specific enc type. And so multi-part form data is what you would use whenever you want to submit something like a file up through a form. Um, from the client side. So that's why we'll be using multi-part multi -part slash form data with our post request. If you didn't have this here, then the image wouldn't actually um, get sent with the request. Okay, and finally, I'm gonna give this form an ID as well. And we'll just call it upload form. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up just a bit as well. And here we'll have a div class form group. Oops, form group from Bootstrap. And let's create a label for, so this would be label ASP for title. And so you pass ASP for here, just one of the property, uh, one of the properties on your model. And then we can provide our input and do the same. And I'm gonna give this a class form control here as well. Okay, I'm gonna create a second form group here. So I'll just copy and paste this. And then what I can do instead of title here is just delete both of these. And then we will create a label and input for our tags. And then finally, we need to be able to actually allow the user to upload an image. So I'm going to create a third div here. And we're going to specify a label with class button, button default, and button file, which will be a custom CSS class. And here we'll say, like, browse for image. And then here we'll specify our input. So we can say type is equal to file, name is equal to file, and then here's a little trick. We can actually set the dis uh, an inline style here of display none. Um, just because the default input for uploading files to a form doesn't really look that good, and so instead we'll just kind of hide it and provide um, this button to allow users to click and browse for the image. Okay, and then finally here we'll have a div of class submit. And we'll have a button of type submit. ID will be our upload button or button upload. And the class will be a bootstrap button, button info. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like now. So we'll fire up the server. And if we click upload, we can see our simple form here. Again, we don't have any custom styling on it. And I think in this case, I might like to add just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we need to head over into our CSS. And one thing I'm gonna do is I, I created this 
um, box shadow. Let's move uh, this over here so we can kind of take a look at the code or the markup and the CSS at the same time. So I specified this drop shadow um, CSS class here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is take the box shadow out of our gallery image container, create a new class called drop shadow, and then and then just paste in the box shadow that I'd already specified here inside of this uh, dedicated drop shadow property. And then what I can do is I'll just view the solution explorer again. And um, if we head back into our gallery index, so if we go here to views and then our gallery index, this div class gallery image container, I'm also just now going to add our drop shadow class to. Um, because the drop shadow is something that I would probably like to use on more than one element throughout the application. So we'll just have a dedicated CSS class for it here. Okay, so we'll unpin our solution explorer again. And the other thing that I'll do while we're in here editing CSS is first of all correct this typo. Um, but I'll also go ahead and add styles for the CSS classes that I declared on our image detail view as well. So we'll have this image detail container um, just with some really simple stuff here. So we'll just do text align left. And then we had an image detail class where I'm just going to provide a little bit of padding and border radius. And then we had this uh, metadata row on our detail page, which included the image uh, title or description, if you will, and then the um, created on date or uploaded date. So we'll provide a bit of padding there as well. Okay, so now on our upload page here, let's kind of work, I guess, from bottom to top here. So we have this uh, submit button. So we had a class submit. And here I'm just going to provide a tiny bit of padding. This button file, I think I'll just provide a little bit of margin around it. So we'll say margin of like six pixels. Then our upload form here, where we can see that this is a form element and we had an ID of upload form. So we can say upload form, provide some padding. We'll provide auto margins and a width of 50%. So that's gonna kind of keep things centered. And then finally, I had this all inside of this row of class upload container, where I'll just provide another little bit of padding here. So I realize that there's some duplicate CSS here. Um, I'm just going to leave this here that you can then um, go through and um, further customize to your liking. So come here and we'll just reload. Yeah, and that's not, <laughs> it's not really necessarily beautiful or anything, but it does start to slightly clean things up. So you can see that we can provide a title, like sample image. Let's say that we were going to upload images of like mountains. So we might say like mountain, camping, hiking, and then we could browse for the image. Um, we could select one and then we could submit our form. So we obviously don't have anything happening yet inside of our um, post method. So let's go ahead and start to wire that up. So I'll go ahead and close the CSS for now and we'll pin the solution explorer back. So we'll head into our image controller and let's go ahead and just set a breakpoint here on our post method of upload new image. All it's going to do is just return um, like a you know, an HTTP 200 response back just to, just to say that um, everything is working. Um, but of course, we don't have anything happening in this method. Nonetheless, let's just set a, a breakpoint here. And what I'll do is just go ahead and submit the form. And so you can see we hit a breakpoint here. So the HTTP post is indeed working. If we just hit F5 to go through, we obviously have an empty response here. Okay, so in the next video, we will actually complete this HTTP post upload new image method and wire it up so that we can actually post the file contents from that form up to Azure in order to store it in blob storage. So in that video, we'll, we'll look at how to set up a free account on Azure 
and um, get the connection strings to our storage container and then actually um, have our application talk to the storage container and store our images remotely. All right, see you then.